This program is brought to you as a public service by Maui Causes. Maui Causes is a crowd-funded media production group that provides media production services to a variety of environmental and progressive causes here in Maui County. Visit us on the web at www.mauicauses.org. Okay, uh, good evening everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started. If you wanna grab a seat. Um, my name is Sandy Boz. I'm the Managing Director for the County of Maui and we appreciate you uh, coming to this community meeting regarding uh, the 50 lots of the fairways um, that was uh, acquired uh, by the county. Um, uh, many of you know that it was a part of a litigation settlement agreement. Uh, the county did acquire uh, it's 50 uh, house lots and one drainage lot as well as the roadway um, that is a part of it. We have maps on uh, different sides so you can take a look if you're not familiar with the site. Uh, Pretty positive that everybody here is familiar with the site if you've been around for a while. We also have council members here. I'm very happy to see you here. We're going to discuss this item again on Thursday, uh, Thursday morning at the Economic Development and Budget Committee, 9 a.m. at the council chamber. Uh, the same topic will be up here. Uh, council member from Wailuku District, Alice Lee. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Council member who's uh, the chair of affordable housing, uh, Tasha Kama. And a council member who goes to every public meeting and is very involved um, from a country, actually, uh, in the Thank you for joining us. Uh, did I miss anybody introduction-wise? Oh, Sarah. Um, Sarah's representing uh, Keani Rollins Fernandez. Um, Sarah Pajimola is, uh, is her executive assistant. We also have Julie Reed. Uh, from Office of Council Services here as well. Uh, thank you for joining us. You know, this is something that has been in discussion for eons. Um, obviously, uh, this, uh, the, the situation occurred over 10 years ago um, where the county ended up um, getting you know, into a settlement agreement and acquiring these properties. We paid uh, around $11 million for uh, these properties as well as a few other pieces uh, that were a part of that settlement agreement. And um, there's you know, some history and facts about that. If you need, uh, we can go into those, but uh, I think pretty much most of you know. We will have uh, the opportunity for question and answers. Hopefully we can answer your questions, but basically we're here to get input from you. Uh, there has been many discussions over the years about what uh, should be the end outcome of this, of this property. Uh, should it be uh, affordable housing? Should it be sold to, Maui, you know, back to a, a developer like um, Chula or Town or whoever, you know, the other people developing other Maui Lani lots um, as it was originally supposed to be developed. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different options. We would really want to hear from you. The county council um, and the administration over the years have had ideas, they've had uh, discussions, but this is um, the first time we're actually coming out to the community to have those discussions. Um, you know, the, the, of course, the council members, uh, council meetings are public information and, and public can provide uh, comments, but we really wanted it to hear from you um, what, your, what your concerns are, what your suggestions are, and what we want to have an end outcome for this. Um, and that end outcome is really going to be up to the county council to finally decide. No, it's um, not. It's not. It is not. It, it is not going to be up to the county council. It is not. Okay. You address well, Paloma Drive I, 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 and the injury to our neighborhood and the injury to the children and grandparents who live there before okay. you talk about what solution. Uh, Annette, because uh, you said you guys was going to maintain this property and you did it. I am, I'm not listening to you because I listen you to the to county. Have you Go ahead. Have me removed. I'm waiting. I really want to I'm hear waiting. From you. Have I me want to no, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. That's what you're here You guys for. laugh at me when I come to the council have and go like have this. Have I ever talked to you before? And go like this. Yeah. So. Have I ever talked to you before? Have I ever heard? You, you don't care to talk to me. So go back and do your meeting, and I will sit here quietly until you say something that I know is bullshit, and then I'm going to call you on it. Because we are not talking about smoothing over Palama Drive. We're going to smooth over Palama Drive. And we're going to put affordable housing on here. And that's going to solve that, all the issues okay. that you guys would rubber stamp. Can, can, can you let us have the meeting? Go ahead. Thank you. 
I hope we caught that, Sam. Cool. Anyway, what, what we're here for is to listen to you. We really are here to listen to oh, you. Yeah. But we want to you make sure. You tell me that you're going to get 50 people for show up at the next meeting for say we need affordable uh, housing. Well, then you're going to okay. bury us with we're that gonna, project. That's what you're going to do. You're going to bury us with your 50 affordable housing projects. We are here to listen. And that's no, you're not. You are here to check the box. The, the, no, we're and not I'm going here outside to check because the box. you're okay. irritating me. All right. Um, I do want to set some ground rules for this, and I ground was hoping to do that before. You know what? We don't know ground level rules. Yeah. We don't know ground rules. You took that from us. We have no ground rules. Look at the pictures. You took that from us. So don't talk to me about ground rules. Hey, oh! Um, so we want to hear from you, and, and we want to understand. Because the, the decisions that have been made in the past haven't been uh, as more you know, public input as we would, I would like. And I really appreciate though, you showing up. You, whether you live on Kalama Drive, or you live in Maulilani, or you live outside of the community. Um, it's, we're here to figure out what to do with these lots. And if the recommendations that come from this meeting are going to be shared with the County Council, um, they will vote on the disposition of this. The county charter, the county code, requires the county council to vote on the disposition of county property and what we end up dealing with that. So, um, okay. Can you guys get somebody to look at these pictures that I just took today at my house? Sure. Let me, see. Okay. Let me explain this to you first. Come, come here. Let's get you on the microphone. microphone. You see where these guys, these houses are? This is across the street. You see the land that's... You see the land that's staying above, which is the fence and all the dirt? Right. That was never at the bottom of these guys' houses. Now you want to build above us. You see my mountain view, which I love so much? I ain't going to see that anymore. I got pictures lined up the road so it, that goes so all the way down. You see, this is all my neighbors. This is all my neighbors. This is the top, top of the fence, fence line. Okay. That means all that dirt should not be higher than all this groundwork here. Look, it's, it's simple, it's simple. All the people that on, on this side can't even see the mountain anymore. Do you have pictures of what it looked like before? You guys have that. We do. You guys have that in all your archives. Okay. We don't need to come up to tell you guys that. You guys are supposed to come up with that yourself. Come on, man. This is this is reality. Look, this is going back the other way. You see all the white fences above everybody's house? The ground was here, where the road is. And also, you guys tied into our sewer system, which floods down the road, which I didn't take a picture of because it's way down the road. It yeah. floods every time it rains. I, we haven't tied into the system. OK, well, whatever else, they did, yeah. they did not make a new infrastructure to go and tie it onto themselves, right. into the main. There's a drainage But we know spot, because they right. never come to any of the roads. Yeah. Right. They will go right to the corner and pop. Yeah. OK? That's all I got to say. Yeah. Well, you guys can, tell me after this what's going on. Yeah. Can you share your name? My name is Shannon Dua Silva. I live on Palama Drive. Okay, thank you. I appreciate okay. that. All right. I yeah. saw this happen. Okay. I saw my house shake. Yeah. My house is cracking because it is, but we couldn't get nothing compensated because it was on the other side of the road. We had no say in it. You want to talk about talking saying? Talk to the people on the street. Yeah, well, that uh, lived that's, through it. That's that why we invited you here. We lived yeah. through yeah. that. We, we specifically and now invited we gotta you here to through. listen. Yeah. New growth, new height, cut that thing back down, and then build. That's all we're asking. Okay. Cut it back to where it was, make it like everybody else. Because they were trying to sell it as an elite ocean mountain view. Mm. We saw that in the temple. Right. We're not illiterate. Okay. We grew up, we went to school like everybody else in here. Right. Help us. Okay. All right. Don't hurt us. Help us. Well, thank you for your input. Yeah. Yes. So my question is, the height of the Land behind Kalama. Is it going to be brought down? Or, I mean, what are the plans? Or right now, um, the Bring it down. the suggestion um, from our first um, uh, member here is to is to bring it down. Um, it doesn't. The way that it um, is right now is legal to build at at the current grade. Um, the the county council uh, in previous. Wait, 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 w
I can get a permit to legalize my house to be lifted higher than that to put it normal like how it was before. So all of us come along the street and get that same permit to make I, us I even. I don't know to the. Make us even yeah, yeah. Ho, ho, legally. Yeah, I don't. I don't know the current law, but it was changed. Um, uh, the great height definition was was changed. So now anybody can do that. But it was illegal. I don't. Yeah. It was illegal to start with. That's why we, so that, uh, uh, honestly, that's why we ended up having to pay $11 million in a settlement agreement. Is yeah. an illegal thing legal? Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, hold, hold on one second. We're going to try to keep, keep one person at a time. So Leah had the, had the opportunity. So um, theoretically, they could build at that, at that height, right? Concern is what's going to happen so, at this point before any project moves forward. Right. Um, so that is a concern that we would have to deal with. Um, on you know, if we build it over there, I've just seen pictures of it of the retaining wall um, and the issue over there. That it's going to have to be something that's dealt with um, before any any. They're going to when before building permits are, are issued, they're going to have to do you know soil work and. Um, and understanding, you know, it's testing and things like that to make sure that it, it's proper enough to build. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, uh, I'm here to listen. Yeah. Uh, I am his neighbor. Okay. I, I just bought that house right across from him. And now that I see what's happening, you know, something really needs to be done. Uh -huh. uh, yes, you're here to listen, but I think the most concerning issue is it's almost like the Palama Drive was just. Um, Forgotten. So, hopefully, we can come up with a conclusion peacefully. We have enough trouble in the world. We have enough trouble happening in the state. And if we can come together and make this a much more uh, pleasing and appealing solution, mm -hmm. by all means, let's let's make this. Uh, yeah, and I mean, that, and that is an issue that we want to understand. You know, if, if this that has an impact on the future of these 50 lots is, is the input that you're providing to us. And we appreciate um, that, that input. Um, we had one up here and then uh, Tasha in the back. Hi, I, I live on uh, uh, Montana Street. Uh -huh. And uh, when we purchased the house, we were told that the, the way they raised the lots was illegal. And it's the reason they had to sell it or offload it to the county mm -hmm. with the promise of the county changing the law. Of it. When did that happen? Uh, I don't know exactly when it happened. We have. No, no. They, what I was told is that they purchased, well, the county purchased the land with the hoping that they would change the law one day so they could build on it. Yes. When did that happen? Because I'm pretty sure we live on a valley island, so right. two mountains. Yeah. So um, I don't think anyone would, living on any of these hills would say you can reach. Hold, hold on a second. Let me try to get find the answer. Kathy, do you know the answer to that question? The height definition changed in 2010. Uh, 2010. Okay. So, um, so what the, is the definition? Yeah. Do you know what the definition is? Uh, we'll, we'll have, we'll, let's look it up and we'll get you the exact definition. It's from finished grade. It's from finished grade. It used to be from, to be from finished grade or natural grade, whatever it was. A natural grade, the bottom of the hill. Right, right. No, I, yeah, I understand that, yeah, yeah. They went and made it different. Right. For once, they did that. Yeah. Oh, okay, hold, hold on. We're going to get our planning um, department staff to, to answer. Hi. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah. I'm Kathleen O. came from the planning department. I'd have to look up the exact terminology of the height definition, but essentially what happened was they amended the ordinance to be very specific for certain approvals of subdivision after or before a certain date. So this subdivision got incorporated into the change in the height definition. So what gets approved now is different than what got approved for oh, that subdivision. We'll, we'll get back to I can I can look I can look it up while you guys keep discussing. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, so she said two thousand and ten was when that was it before construction? No. After construction. I can, I can. 
Oh, I believe it was after. Uh, Kasha was next. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to um, to ask the residents of that area that when they share, if you wouldn't mind sharing, so that I can understand how this has impacted you and your family and your your yard or your backyard or whatever. So that we can, I least me, because I'm not familiar with that, but I'd like to. And if you can just share, you know, the, the whatever you want to share, but but just so that it's more information for me to understand what it is you all are going through and what the hurt might be or what the angst or the anger, the anxiety. Do you do what's wrong That's what I'm asking well, we if you guys can share. All we that. Yeah, okay. that's what you wanted here. Thank you. Yeah, so I'll look at this gentleman. Hi, uh, my name is Chris Fishkin, and I'm actually representing the Maui Real News Network, um, which uh, is doing stories on this uh, on a copy. And I just want to answer this gentleman's question, because I do know the answer. Okay. And I think it's important that concerned citizens all know the answers to the history, to historical facts about this, what happened here. Basically, uh, Milton Arakawa, director at former Milton Arakawa at the time, basically signed off on an unlawful subdivision uh, with, a, with an overhyped grant uh, that the mayor allowed. And the only way they could protect their liability, the mayor and Milton Arakawa, was to change the grading ordinance to make it legal. What was un unlawful became lawful for liability reasons. Has Director Milton Arakawa, and I'd like to ask the county, ever been held responsible for signing off on this unlawful subdivision and allowing the violation of the grading ordinance? The answer is no, but I'd like to know why. Has, did Mayor Alan Arakawa ever get held responsible for that? The settlement that you folks are talking about uh, basically is not the county buying back the property. It was settled uh, because Pat Wong, who Ms. Ms. Kama, with all due respect, you voted to confirm. Mr. Wong actually, uh, who has a relationship with the developer's lawyer, advised the council to buy back the property. There's only one interesting thing that never happened. You see this, this diagram here? This diagram was done at a cost of two years and a couple, about $70,000 by a, an, uh, an affordable housing expert firm, okay, that was going to take down the walls to where they previously, uh, take down to its previous ordinance, grading, grading ordinance, beautify, the, uh, that whole area with footpaths going for local people to the, to the hospital, going to the, uh, the school, going to shopping. This plan was never given to the council by Patrick Foreman. We have for the last two years been trying to get the council to acknowledge the fact that this plan was never given. Uh, Mayor Allen, Mayor, excuse me, Mayor Victorino, let's keep it real, Mayor Victorino was on the council at the time. And uh, he knows, he's acknowledged, he's never seen this plan. Mr. Bass, have you ever seen this architectural rendering? I did about two days ago. Okay, yeah. so about two days ago. So basically, bottom line is, we, we were trying to get Ellie Cochran, she wouldn't do anything. I'm now trying to ask the same questions of transparency, accountability, uh, to uh, Keone Rollins Fernandez. I'm having a hard time getting a meeting with her. The, this is done already. This is like reinventing the wheel, Mr. Paz. And with all due respect, um, it sounds like you'd like to kind of work it so that you can sell off this property. In my opinion, it seems like that you're trying to be like, well, the way you phrased this meeting was that uh, we can either develop here or we can, we can sell it off for adequate family style units somewhere else. But this has already been done, and nobody is even willing to address the fact that it happened, and it's never even been considered. And affordable housing, workforce affordable housing, and senior housing is all planned out by a local architect and an engineering firm with ties, you know, local ties to the island, and with a resume that's just unbelievable. And uh, it doesn't require a developer, now it requires a builder. Uh, you don't need to partner with the developer, the county owns the land. You just need a builder. And, if, and, and I'm trying to get somebody to look at this thing because nobody's willing to. Not in the council, 
and not in the mayor's office to date until you've got a copy of this. So, you know, I'm here just to let, you, let everybody know a little bit about the historical facts behind this whole thing. Patrick Wong, who made a deal to advise the council, let me just, let me just finish my point. Okay. Patrick Wong, who made a deal to advise the council to buy back the property, then declared that he made $250,000 a year for the next two years in gambling. Have you ever heard of anyone making a half a million dollars in Vegas? So no one has been ever willing in the county, and I'd like to ask you, Mr. Baz, are you willing to do an audit of Mr. Wong as to why, where that money came from? Because I think it came from that development, number one. And number two, no one's ever been held accountable for this grade. So, what's that? I'm just, so I'm just saying, there's something out there, and I... And I well, um, thank you for providing us with that. And that's, so this is an option that we can discuss and, and, and possibly move forward with. Uh, there, yeah, um, I, I did glance at that. Um, there, there's some challenges, but we can, you know, if that's something that we move forward with. Um, some other, yeah, yeah. Sure. And I'd like to ask, since Sarah is here, I'd like to ask this of Kenny Rollins, who's taken on this project as well. Who is advising you? And who is advising Ms. Rollins Fernandez in terms of this project? Because what I got talking to Kenny Rollins Fernandez's executive assistant, Jennifer, is that, well, she's doing the research herself. There's experts out here. That's why we never have affordable housing with, with in Maui. Experts. Where are the experts? So, she told me there was no experts. So what I'm doing is coming out to the community and listening to you. Because that's really what, what we want to do. And I'm sure um, Ms. Rollins Fernandez would want to do the same thing. Um, and listen to, to all aspects and input for this. I would, right? I would request, respectfully, that you might consult the people who were the experts who did this and labored hard so, long on it to get some more information. So thank you for providing that. Um, my office has received um, those plans and um, I hope that somebody would present it to the public meeting on to Thursday um, at 9 a.m. You're welcome to present it as public testimony there as well. Um, so I'm going yeah. Can you explain the original law? Um, I, I'm not an expert on this and I can't really, I, all I tell you is that um, the, from my understanding, the original law was that the building heights were allowed um, to be a certain uh, height based on the, the original grade or natural grade of the property. It was supposed to be eight feet above the original grade, correct? Um, I, 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 depending on the zoning, uh, what was allowed, but the, bu the building height, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So if the, if the zoning was residential, I believe it's 30 feet a height limit. So and they went 40, so 10 over. Yeah. Um, and that, that's what the problem that was, was because it was 10 over. And then they changed the laws, so now it's, the county can build on. Theoretically, right, yeah. Okay. So. Or we can make bumpers. <laughs> yeah, so well, my idea is to yeah. remove that 40, 40 feet of fill okay. and bring it back to the original, the original grade, grade right? Give us back what we lost because it was illegal to begin with. And that, it was filled with milk mud from HCNS with all those chemicals from all those years. It was brought for, what, three years? 18 wheelers were brought over. Every day we heard, we heard the trucks backing in with their beeping, opening the tailgates, banging the tailgates to make sure every single grain of, of dirt was emptied out. Truck after truck for three years. Our, our houses shook, lights fell out of the ceilings, swimming pools were cracked, you know, garages were, uh, uh, floors and driveways were cracked, ceilings were cracked, okay? But we were in the wrong for living there, right? So, there's a lot of history of this a lot of people don't know, right? okay? So, I think it's important that everybody knows the history yeah. first before we move on to Help what can be done about it. the sand they stole from that area because it's all sand. We used to play in the sand. Right. So everybody had beautiful views of the mountain, Kiabi, the golf course. Uh, there were used to be cows out there, you know. 
before that happened. And Paloma got the worst of it because you go out their back door where it used to be a nice open field that they could see the, the, the beautiful mountain. And now they go outside, it's 30, 40 feet of fill of a wall right in their backyard that blocks the sun. And when it rains, it's a huge waterfall into their backyard flooding the streets. So it needs to be brought back to the original grade okay. right. to make it right for the people, not for the developers. I understand we need affordable housing. Look at all this A and B land out in the valley here. Thousands and thousands and thousands of acres that could be used. All right. No, I, thank you. Appreciate that, that, that suggestion. It sounds like there's a lot of people have that same comment. So. There's more to our show in just a moment. This program is brought to you as a public service by Maui Causes. Maui Causes is a crowd-funded media production group that provides media production services to a variety of environmental and progressive causes here in Maui County. Visit us on the web at www.mauicauses.org. Hi, my name is Lee. I live on Kuba County Street. There are only a few uh, houses from the corner there. Right, right there. So we moved in about three years ago, and we used to live in Haku. Um, you know, personally, it seems to me like the county already has liability, and no matter what they do, that liability potential is always going to be there. So my advice is why don't you turn it into a park? Yes, Everybody so needs a park. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as much as affordable housing. Yep. Besides, affordable housing is all relative anyway. You really want affordable, move to Arkansas. Yeah. You know? Yeah, hell. It's really cheap there. Well, I mean, but who wants to live in Arkansas? You know? <laughs> it's probably why it's affordable. That's right. You know, this is Hawaii. Okay. Right. Um, and most of the people around me are people who've lived on the island for a long time and they moved off. Okay. You know, our first house was $24,000. We can't buy an SUV for that. Hell, you can't even buy a Prius for that. You know, so uh, I say turn it into a park. You know, bring it right back down Parkway anyway. Take the damn fences out. Uh, remove that huge flood control structure that you have there, which is awful looking. And uh, I mean, you already have a sunk investment. You know, county already paid what, 11 something million for that? So, you know, if you're gonna sell it to the developer and they know that they have a potential liability, who's gonna buy it, you know? They're okay. just buying a lawsuit. The suggestion of making it okay. a part. Okay, thank you. So I'll look um, the um, nice gentle lady. Hi, I just want to ask, um, before um, it was raised, did they ever do scans of the grounds for burial grounds there as they're doing with the parkways and all the issues they're having there? Yeah, I, That's I, something that... Thank you. I, I'm not aware uh, of um, what the application... The burial grounds. Right, uh, was done. Uh, if there was an archaeological inventory study uh, that was done on the property, um, I can go back and look through our public works records. Uh, that's a good that. suggestion. Okay, thank you. Annette, yes. You know, a park sounds wonderful, but you're still not going to be able to do a park unless you remove the mud fill, toxic, by my dad. And you, the county, want to own a park with a 40 foot drop when people barbecuing their hot dogs. The kids gonna fall off the other end, or throw one rock on Mrs. Teresa's head. Uh, it sounds like the suggestion to make it a park would be to cut the fill first and then yes. um, and make it okay. a natural gradient. Okay. We'd have to take okay. a look. Okay. Take a look, and then take a look at our drainage. Yes. Because the drainage comes with that plan, right. and the drainage connects to the next street and the next street and the next street, and that is why they never fixed our drainage. Okay. Because the county came to the conclusion that it was too expensive to fix our drainage. Because the initial developer gave the county $350,000 to establish a basin on our side that would connect to the basin that they created on their side of a decorative wall that goes up 30 feet with no footing, with no, it's a decorative wall holding back tons and tons and tons of mill mud. When you look at the structure and the way it should have been built, it says gravel and sand, which is very confusing because they took out the sand, which the wall was supposed to be built with sand and gravel, but they took out our sand and they gave us mill mud. 
And in all of the plans for the drawings for the wall, it says the wall should be terraced as a retaining wall, and that wall goes up straight 30 feet. Okay? When they brought in the pipes, and we brought this uh, to I'll the... I'll take a look at the public works plans and see okay, uh, what the original... Yeah, down. thank you for, for expressing that. Definitely. Um, Does anybody else have comments? Other comments? Yeah, I mean, uh, it sounds like most of the people here are are either from Palama Drive or, or close to Pu'u Makani Road. Is that the case? I mean, yeah, I'm getting a lot of a lot of. Not, yeah, you know, no, no, and believe me, that's why I'm helpful. Okay, it's all of us here. Period. You want to know what you're going to do? Good to hear. Well, right now we're listening. Right, we're right now we're getting suggestions. Um, we will discuss this on Thursday with the County Council um, and we will present this information to them. So do um, you have another comment? Or? Yeah. yeah, so the next, next steps are, um, thank you, I mean, uh, we've, that's pretty loud and, and clear, um, your message, and uh, we will take this back to the County Council on Thursday. Um, I will be presenting to them um, your comments and, and, uh, and suggestions. Um, we've heard uh, Park, Right, we've heard uh, affordable housing, but bringing the grade back down. The wall, the wall, yeah, and the wall, yeah, obviously. We don't want to be in walls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Walls. bringing the bringing the grade back down would mean removing the walls and back there too. Giving the view yeah. back and yeah. bringing it back yeah. to the original yeah. grade. And, and we still have a problem with drainage on Palama Drive that we obviously need to deal with. So I will bring that directly to Public Works Department and see what their and the status is of that. Housing, you yeah. drop it down. Yeah. We don't mind you build affordable housing. Okay. But drop it down. All right. Get the no. walls off our faces. Okay. That's good to hear. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. You're saying remove the fill back to the original grade because there's 40 feet of fill in there. Uh, yeah. So are you taking a top 10 foot out that would have made it legal in the first place? Are you talking but about the, removing 40 the, feet? The original law natural grade was that 30 feet is building height. So they couldn't build anything beyond well, the part 30 of that 30 feet, feet was the fill that they brought in. Yeah, right. So now you're talking if, 30 if they build on top of that, then that would be yes. 70 feet okay. or something like so that. So from what I'm talking hearing. original yeah. grade, what are we talking about removing I, 40 feet? Should that be an option? Well, that's one suggestion here. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's going to be you know. Right. No, I'm telling, that's, that's just, the options. Just that, answering yeah. a question yeah. for me, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, yes. I think another concern is a hydrologist needs to be consulted because if you come to Palama Drive mm -hmm. and the vicinity when it rains, right. the community is disabled. I and I believe, um, Annette can elaborate on this, but I believe at one point, uh, one of the developers, uh, because this is Dream City Increment 7, mm -hmm. was supposed to make a drainage system, and that's never been done. Uh, Annette and uh, her neighbors uh, I, can speak to that, yeah. um, but if, if, if you speak to the people of Palama Drive, you will find out, and many of them are long, long, long-term, lifelong residents, and many generations, uh -huh. that area was actually a ravine. Water flowed through there, and I, I, I really feel that, you know, how could you possibly have equal housing? Um, equal housing. The gulch, however, has been cleared and filled with mill mud from the old Paia sugar mill, a substance that has been questioned by other neighbors because it could be laced with chemicals, including arsenic. So I think, you know, you need uh, toxicology reports, a right. hydrologist, a structural engineer, you know. Affordable housing is great, but it just seems that th this, 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 the, the lay of the land had best be restored for the sake of these, this community. I mean, Palama Drive residents, everybody in that area, they, 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 you know, when it starts to rain, they are endangered. You know, when the developer built that retaining wall, 
there's no grout. I mean, I, you know, the neighbors can tell you what happens uh, when it rains. Yes, um, Miss Hughes so showed this the This might not be the best place for affordable housing. Yeah. Well, so thank you. Thank, thank you. you very we much. appreciate your comments. Um, so yeah, so this is very good information. Um, a lot of this is new to me, and I apologize for being ignorant of, of the situation down there. I uh, directly talked to Public Works um, about the drainage issue. Um, I'm going to text the director on my way back home and try to give her a call and see, uh, have her do some research on what's going on with the drainage, because it's something that definitely needs to be addressed no matter what happens. Um, you shouldn't be living in, in you know, water, you know, filling up your, your roadway. Um, and the next steps for, for us will be gathering um, the notes that we're taking here um, and hopefully you know, videos being going to be presented too as well. But my, our job will be taking notes um, to the meeting on Thursday and presenting to this to the county council members um, so that they can be analyzing this information and um, making uh, the best decision uh, that, they, that they collectively will make on this. Yeah. Hey Sandy, one quick question. Sure. Of all those people attending this meeting tonight, how many reside within the existing Maui Lani uh, subdivision uh, versus the adjacent? By half. Could we ask them their opinion of lowering the fill and I think they, I think they just gave okay. these, these gentlemen just acknowledged they're from Maui, you live in Maulani, right? Yeah, they yeah, that was the same comments. So. Just a comment. I yes. don't live on Kalama, but I have walked those twenty fifty lots only because it was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I give you kudos for coming out and asking because it's kind of embarrassing that the that our county doesn't really know what they have or not have. And so it becomes really quite a quite irrelevant when you're looking at what was and what is. So those who have been impacted by that perhaps need to have some kind of a incentivized uh, solution that they can live with going forward. But other than that, I would have thought you would have wanted to walk the streets and talk to those people who live there already, as opposed to exposing the ineptness of the planning that has happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. And no, I don't I live there, I live, I live, I live, but this has been something that has been there forever. You know, and it was one, one, yes, you know, fiasco on top of another. And for, to try to hide it, and what would have been helpful here is to come with the, the background first to let us know where the screw ups was. Mm -hmm. And then know that we have to now work from that, yeah. as opposed to you know as opposed to blaming because the yeah. one those of you who are there are there. You felt the cracks, seen the axe, and now you're trying to figure out what next. Right. So yeah, and, and and I you know this this is I, and I can apologize. This is new to me um, and in this responsibility, and I really appreciate your comments. Um, there has been discussion in the past, but uh, again, you know, kind of in isolated uh, opportunities. And uh, this is an opportunity for us to, to listen to your comments. And, uh, and I appreciate you driving here. You know, I, uh, I, I, I could have walked the, the streets myself in, in the town. And I appreciate you coming here and sharing your thoughts with us um, so we can move forward. Uh, understanding, you know, this is, at this point, um, we're, Mayor Victorino, uh, myself, are dealing with this in the roles that we have now from the way it is, right? And so we want to move forward. And if moving forward is going back, then maybe that's the best solution. Um, but that's, you know, that's, but we, we have it right now. Uh, we can't fix the past. Uh, but we can hopefully uh, plan it better for the future um, in, in dealing with this. And, and like I said, maybe fixing the, making the future is, is going back. It's, I don't know, we gotta talk to the, yeah. 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 No, I understand, and that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah, thank you, appreciate that. Who's responsible for like the drainage above the fence line? Uh, well, right now the county would be responsible for the drainage above the fence line and 
on Paloma Street. I mean, it's, Paloma Street's a public um, a road, so we would be responsible for that, the Department of Public Works. Um, the, the lots themselves and the drainage with that, um, there isn't really a department responsible, and that's part of the reason why it, it hasn't been maintained um, to the best that it could have been, because there hasn't been um, some responsible party. Um, we're just, it was unfortunately, you know, there we have um, Department of Finance who has acquired the property, but there's no real maintenance on it um, to, to first say it. And so that's kind of the reason why. But yes, the county would be responsible for both above and, and below. So behind my house, there is the water attachment. Yeah? Okay. The swell part. There was a fence line. And there's another fence and there's a swell between. The fence, the one we had put for the catchment, mm -hmm. rusted away. So now it's gone. Okay, well, we'll take a look at that. Um, I'll, I'll go, I'm gonna go walk the street. So I think it's yeah. just Hopefully I can get there tomorrow, if not on Thursday. Where kids do go there. Uh -huh. To go smoke nighttime or whatever, but I noticed on uh, some of the pictures there's a you, you're talking about it's a, it's a eight foot or so um, kind of like walkway behind your properties between the wall. Is that what you're talking about? Right. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll take a look at that. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. And okay, all the trees growing between the fences. Okay. I called the county uh -huh. when they were small. They was gonna send somebody out, but nobody came out. So the Calvish trees All right. in the fence line already. Okay, all right. Well, may, it looks like we may have to replace that fence no matter what. But we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. Okay, thank you. <coughs> awesome. And one oh. more thing. Oh. There's a okay. few bars that they left on my property that is sticking out. Is there, so there's construction material that was left on your property? Okay, let me get the, your, your direct information and um, I'll, I'll come by and we'll see what we can do about um, getting that removed as well. Okay, if you don't mind, do my sharing. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. As we're trying to figure this out, mm -hmm. uh, it's really an eyesore there. The county owns it, and they're responsible for upkeeping it. We have CCNRs that we have to deal with, right. uh, as far as weeds and things like that. We can't even have a planter in front of our house with a nice flowers in it, because it's in a planter. It has to be in the ground. That's how stringent they are. But we look to your property, it's filled with weeds, overgrown. There's big barricades of cement blocking the streets, the grass is overgrown. It got so high, it was probably 20 feet. I had to call the fire department because it was in July, a few years back. They had it cut down because I was afraid the fire was gonna come right through to my house. So now they've been pretty good about cutting the lawns, but the fences are really atrocious. It's, uh, yeah, I saw some of the pictures. Yeah, the graffiti, the, the ground is, they had a nice asphalt road there. And then, well, I don't know who brought these people in, but they practiced asphalting on that road and made it terrible. I, I believe it's the county that did that. It's all rocky now and bumpy when it used to be, it was a perfect asphalt road. And a lot of seniors use that road to exercise, walk their dogs and things like that. But now it's very difficult because people, the kids come, teenagers come in the middle of the night, they park in those dead ends, uh, and they, they drink beer, throw their bottles onto the street. So we had inches of glass, broken glass on that street for years and years and years. Uh, and there's actually, a liability problem with those big cement barriers you have. They're unlit. So if you come, if somebody's flying down that street 
and hits that barrier, I think you guys would be in a world of hurt as far as liability. Okay. Because there's nothing that's telling them that this road ends. You know, they come down on a motorcycle or a car, right. it, would, it would just get plastered at the end of Pu'u Makani. Right, right. At dead about, end. You're talking about right? Right there, yeah. So they come down Pu'u Makani and hit that barrier and get killed, the city's gonna be sued and that's more of our taxpayers' money going to somebody that okay. All right. didn't need to go through that. Okay. So it, it really needs to be addressed. You need to walk it and yeah. see what they've done and yeah. see the graffiti, see all the glass. Yeah. I, I apologize to everyone. I will walk it. I'll make time tomorrow okay. um, to, to go walk it. We have, we have a, um, a recap meeting tomorrow afternoon, so I'll make sure I walk it before. before so they if they do decide to make a park, they should have lockable gates that need to be open and closed right. at certain times so the kids aren't back there creating more problems and more graffiti. Yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah our, our parks are, are locked at night, so that would be in, in be good. park maintenance and things like that. So, okay, no good suggestions. Uh, we'll, yeah. think, one last thing. One last thing. Yeah, yeah. I think the takeaway tonight is something wrong happened 10 years ago uh -huh. to these people. And uh, 10 years, no one done anything. Now we're here trying to decide what to do next. And to your point, going back might be the best option because going forward, this is not what we're like, okay, everything was fine till now. Just build more stuff on it. Everybody's complaining, yeah. don't build. That's the takeaway. Okay. Don't build anything, do something nice with it. I have kids, he has kids. Yeah. We live right next to that. He has kids. <laughs> no, I have kids. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. We all live, yeah. right? Yeah, no, I understand. And that's, this, is, this is exactly what this meeting is for. Um, I, we really wanted to hear the, your input and your concerns. And, and yes, um, you know, Whatever happened 10 years ago, we're at this point right now, and we can move forward. And it looks like we have the ear of council too, as well, um, uh, on this. And hopefully, we can partner to uh, to move forward in, in this arena. So thank you. We appreciate yeah, that. And yeah. What I'm trying to say is, if there was a voting here, we mm -hmm. should have 10 votes each. <laughs> okay. You no, know I'm yeah. serious. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. are the ones Most impactful. directly, yeah. and then it goes on Thursday to some people who are completely. Uh, from. They They're sitting there they looking know. at a plan and say, why can't we just do this and why can't we just do that? Why don't they come and walk around a little and okay. see what like you guys are doing to this to these lots? Okay. Like okay. you guys did the practice for asphalt and ask the people on Kalama, how happy are you guys with your asphalt work? Not anymore. It was like some rookie guy came and drove a motorcycle through it. Like it was terrible. Okay. So with that say, having been said, you guys really think we will trust you guys to build 50 lots? <laughs> I would not. Okay. Well, that, thank you for being honest. Yeah. Very good. Okay. All right. Um, any other? Sandy, that, you been from the uh, Maui Lani Association is here. They could answer questions about. I don't believe so. Uh, we did have a meeting with Maui Lani um, uh, to talk about uh, what possibility um, of building in here. Those of you who live in Maui Lani, uh, which I, I live on the other side of Maui Lani, but we have the same design guidelines and um, yeah, and we have restrictions on what to build. Are those you cannot. Maui yes, they are. Yeah, they are a part of. Um, I, I don't know I have the answer to that question. I will find out why that um, the maintenance, because yeah, because theoretically, yes, um, we pay maintenance too. I mean, we pay maintenance fees just like you do um, as a part of that. $38,400 a year uh, we pay maintenance fees um, uh, as part of the association. Um, uh, I, I didn't ask them that question, but we did talk about, um, so the, the Maui Lani uh, uh, CCNRs uh, do not allow for uh, Ohana units or accessory dwellings. Um, you, it's a single family home, so the, the zoning for this is, is SF5, um, which is single family homes, uh, which would be, that's what's currently allowed to be built um, in that um, zoning uh, category. Um, in the Maui Lani, so and we have to match with Maui Lani's design guidelines because those are uh, those are the CCNRs that are. Uh, yeah, we, we've had some suggestions of from people who uh, think that they could build uh, affordable, and what we talk about affordable, it's more like workforce um, units. It's some of the uh, a lot of the Maui Lani lots are our workforce, right? You know, there's people that are working that can afford property, and so um, that is uh, a part of it. That it's a range um, uh, around the median income, which is 
I'd have to guess. How much is it? Eight? $77,000 for a family of four um, is, a, is the median income. So uh, if, and, and the range for affordable goes up to, um, buddy, what, what is the range for 140 or? So 140% of that. So a family of four could theoretically be making uh, over $100,000 uh, and still afford to, to buy a home in here. So. the children are working too with the parents. Sometimes two, sometimes two, three jobs. Yeah. 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 Some, sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, some, yeah. 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 This is, uh, this is, the, and, and this is the concern that we have about affordable housing. Is that it's a dire need. We have a dire need for affordable housing in in our community. We we need um, the the planning. I mean, the housing human concerns department did a study. We're sh like fifteen thousand uh, fifteen thousand units are going to be needed uh, in the next seven years um, just to to meet the needs of our residents of our community um, to so that we're not having multiple generations and living in crowded housing units that are uh, you know unacceptable. We want to make sure we provide housing units for our people. And, that, and so that is the impetus. So the people that are, are advocating for affordable housing, that's why they're advocating for it. Understanding the issues of this specific property um, may be more challenging than just being able to build affordable housing here. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm using nice words, but um, then, uh, but we do the, the 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 strive and the the hurt and the the discussion that the community has on affordable housing is is really real, and, and it's something that really needs to be addressed as well. Um, so there's there is going to be you know a, a need for for more affordable housing units in the future, and. When I talk about affordable housing, it's it's a wide range, you know, rental housing, um, all the way up to you know, uh, for sale units that are affordable. Um, Chris, one last comment. Yeah, I just um, I just wanted to to mention that um, after consulting with an expert myself, and I and I, I respect the fact I do not live in that area. I myself live in Kahalea, Okay, and I have I've lived in my car. I've lived here in the island for 23 years. I've lived in my car for three months and got a job while doing that, and then moved into with an older man, uh, Kahaleaka Ola, and then moved into an apartment that I was paying $14.50 a month. So I do relate to the affordable housing part personally, but I just want to mention wherever that affordable housing is or should be, we have, we have won so many lands and settlements that we should never have been in, um, like Montana Beach or Paloma Drive, that wherever we own property, uh, if you can do affordable housing on it, right now the interest rates are such that you could literally get paid back, build a, have a builder, not a developer, because you own, you own the property, have a builder build that out, and basically for three or $400,000, you could actually have people like me that are paying fourteen fifty a month for rent, owning their own homes, and have affordable housing, and then the county could get paid back that money. That can be done with a small window where the interest rates are right now, uh, the way the economy is working. So I just want to point that out that it's, you know, if you can sell Montana, sell Montana, sell, you know, get, get money from Mount Montana Beach, sell that to somebody, and then go buy places where you can build. But don't work with developers, work with builders. And that's just my recommendation work with the builders. I, I certainly understand Andy's uh, skepticism. Uh, you know, Maui County has been controlled uh, for many years uh, in really irresponsible ways. Uh, you know, the mayor's ability to appoint directors who were just his friends, not qualified for the job, uh, or participating in a revolving door uh, in and out of the land development industry. That is a practice that has gone on in Maui County for decades. And two years ago, we as a community started to change that because we gave the county council the responsibility to, uh, to vet out the acceptability of the directors that the mayor wants to appoint. We went through that process for the very first time this year. The council was very, very involved um, in, in uh, uh, assessing these directors, and some of the directors were denied their jobs. They did not come back. And that's a great thing for this community. 
there are more people in the established uh, administration that self-described dinosaurs in corporation council that were directly involved with the uh, uh, not, not holding the directors responsible. Uh, the name Milton Arakara was mentioned earlier. Alan Arakara mentioned earlier. They were not held responsible for their faulty decisions. Sam, yep. you, and I'm going to wrap it. I'm okay. going to wrap it right up. Thank you. That's a process that is unfolding in this community, and there is great hope. i you know, I've had conversations with with Mayor Victorino, and he understands how this community has been harmed. He understands how you people have been harmed. And I do believe that in his heart, he wants to see you made whole, and he wants to see these issues resolved, and that no director should have so much authority and responsibility and no accountability. So we are changing in Maui County, and you folks are at the forefront of it. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments about the property? No. All right, um, we got copious notes, um, and um, you're all welcome to, if you can come on Thursday, 9 a.m., uh, testify uh, in the chamber. Um, if not, you're welcome to watch it on Akaku. I will present the comments um, from this meeting uh, and uh, some other factual information that we have um, as well. So um, thank you uh, again. Um, I, we do can appreciate Can I ask a even. question? Yes, yeah. I don't need that. I live on Palama Drive, uh -huh. and you all know what we want, the land to be restored and the wall down. Will it really happen? And if so, will I still be here to see it? So um, I am not in control of that. Um, the, I will make a recommendation to the mayor and to um, the county council um, for uh, what we heard tonight. Yeah, I, 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 but I am not in control of that. But we will start obviously addressing this on, on Thursday with the county council directly. Awesome, mahalo, I appreciate it. Have a good evening, everybody. This program is brought to you as a public service by Maui Causes. Maui Causes is a crowd-funded media production group that provides media production services to a variety of environmental and progressive causes here in Maui County. Visit us on the web at www.mauicauses.org.